welcome back my fellow mobile gamers of YouTube. My name is Nimble Thor and this is Reverse Story, a roguelike Japanese indie 2D shooter with a super unique art style as you guys can see and a control system that is really brilliant, really made for mobile, no loot boxes, no any system and in fact it just has one of the best monetization systems I've seen in a mobile game all year so far. 2020 hasn't been that long but this one <laughs> is really great. Trust me it's also one of the best monetization systems that I've seen in 2019. So I hope that you guys are ready for a good one so strap in and let's have a look at what this game actually has to offer. Now the roguelike aspect of this game of course means that when we die we have to start all over again from the beginning but with the opportunity to buy some permanent upgrades to make things you know just a tiny bit easier the next time around of course and if you like these roguelike mobile games I've covered a ton of them already here on the channel so be sure to go check out games like ailment or elemental dungeon by the way great games I've linked them in the top right corner of the video right now and in the comment section down below this video let's see if we can deal with these new opponents oh we lost one HP there fortunately it seems like there's a HP potion waiting for us in this level as soon as we're done dealing with these enemies and that was it for these enemies that was a pretty quick level actually so now we can get to drink that HP potion and equip all the other great items that were waiting for us. so the way we control our character here in reverse story is by simply flicking the screen to move so I can flick in this direction I flick in this direction and our character moves around like that and we can jump infinitely by the way so you can basically fly in this game which is kind of neat as well. So the controls are really simple and they work very well and then to shoot enemies we simply tap the screen to fire our arrows and our fire bolts and then we can also choose to hold down and that takes us into this slow-mo mode where we charge up a special ability that we can then aim in any direction such as downwards for example and that is really beneficial especially when dealing with very strong opponents. So these are are the controls and they are quite brilliant in my opinion. There's no need for any on-screen buttons taking up any screen real estate. We have of course seen a couple of games that use swipe controls. It's pretty common in fighting games as well but not that many roguelike shooters or roguelike RPG games use these swipe control systems. So I'm pretty happy to see that here in reverse story. Now as a true roguelike of course all the dungeons are randomly generated and whenever we enter a new dungeon we get to pick a random upgrade that will affect the next dungeon. So for example right now we can choose either box at HQ, box at and potion. So in the next level, we'll have those three items waiting for us or potion and narrow, whatever that is. The translations of this game aren't really that great. <laughs> that might actually be this game's main downside. It doesn't take away from the gameplay experience, of course, but uh, it's clear to see that this has not been developed by a native English speaker. You'll probably not have any issues playing the game, though, as the game is pretty much self-explanatory. Now, we also pick up temporary power-ups or equipment pieces from these chests that are found in almost every single level. And then sometimes we also have the option of buying a certain upgrade for in-game gold. And we earn this in-game gold, and that gold is temporary, by the way. When we die, we're going to lose that. But we can also choose to buy, for example, right here, we can choose to buy a life potion for 2,000 gold. We do have 3 HP though and that's the maximum right now at least it's the maximum but we can upgrade that once we're back home again so essentially when we die we get to upgrade our character so it becomes a bit stronger the next time around. Now unlike many other roguelikes I've played we can actually just equip every single item that we get in these levels we don't have to pick and that means that the progression feels pretty fast which I really appreciate uh, and we also need those upgrades by the way because there's gonna be a boss battle coming up and that boss is gonna be freaking difficult in fact I haven't yet been able to defeat the boss we only have one HP left now by the way I just noticed so <laughs> I mean with a bit of luck we'll get to the boss fight oh there we go okay so now let's go have a look at the items we got here this one at critical 1% this one at ice element that's nice so I guess that means we can freeze down enemies or at least we have a chance of freeze down enemies and this one adds an auto homing missile that's awesome that's actually my favorite upgrade look at it here you go you see those homing missiles have now been added to our normal attack all right over here we've got one of those shops that I was talking about so in here we can buy a random item for 300 gold let's see what it was we got here it seems to be a 1% critical attack increase once again. Let's just buy a few more of these because I always end up not buying, you know, not buying stuff, not spending all of my gold. And that's really just a waste of resources. This one, Lightning plus 25, looks like a pretty rare item. This one adds a fall bump. So now we have that as well. Let's go have a look at how that looks like. 
Oh, there we go. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. All right, I think we're ready for the next level now. Choose your destiny. I'll select your destiny. Okay, so I'm gonna go for enemy ad and a shop or the fool. I guess the fool is just something random is gonna happen, so we don't really know. Is the boss battle coming up now? Nope, there's one more at least. At least one more normal level. Oh man, these homing missiles are so awesome. We deal a shit ton of damage now, I gotta say. This is perfect. Now, we gotta make sure we pick up as much of this currency, whether it be gold or whether it be one of the other two currencies that we've got in this game, because we can use those currencies once we're back home to upgrade our character. So we're done with this level already as well. And there are so many items waiting for us here. I'm gonna just equip all of them and we're gonna head into what might be the boss battle. Let's see. I think... Think. Oh, we have to hold down to select this one, right? Let's see. Yes, there we go. As I expected, this is the boss battle. This is gonna be a difficult one, but don't worry though. If we die, we're just gonna head back to town. We're gonna upgrade our character and we're gonna have a second go at this boss battle. And hopefully we'll then do a bit better the next time. So this boss has four different types of attack patterns. This is what I learned so far. And predicting these attack patterns and knowing these attack patterns makes a big difference. But we got hit already though. And that's the thing about this game, there's no way you can revive by watching an advertisement, no way you can spend an in-app purchase or, you know, some premium currency to revive when you're dead. You're just dead, you <laughs> know, too bad. Tough luck, son. You gotta start all over again. But because of all these great systems and the simple controls and the hardcore gameplay, I gotta say that reverse story really just feels great to play, and that's the thing about this game. The slow-mo effects when charging up the special attack, we can even try that one here in the menu. Uh, the bullet hit effects and the screen shake when hitting enemies, it all really comes together to create an awesome mobile game experience. So yes, I quite like the game as you can probably hear, but I have not been able to defeat the boss though yet. So let's go in now and buy some more HP. These are permanent upgrades to our characters. I'm gonna buy one more HP. So now we have five in total. We can get all the way up to 10 HP in total though, as you guys can see, if we collect enough in-game resources. We've also got the Wheel of Fate over here, which uses another in-game currency that we also earn for normal gameplay, and that allows us to unlock a new card, a new permanent upgrade to our character. So let's draw a card right now and let's see what we're gonna get from this almost gacha-like system, it feels like. We got shield, or charge shield. Shield when charging expands when moving the area to be replenished. That makes very little sense. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess we'll just see. I got a card. Tap the icon in the bottom left to equip it. Okay, so let's do that. About Erin cards. Erin cards is equipped in this window. Okay, sounds great. What do we want to equip here? Well, we definitely want to equip this new card that we got, and we have to replace it with something else, it seems. So, I am going to replace it with this fire plus 30 attack, because I think a bit of extra shield is more useful than that. At least we're gonna try that, and I'm gonna draw one more card. Maybe we're gonna get something awesome. Let's see. Fingers crossed here, guys. Let me know your favorite roguelike, by the way, if you've got one, and I'll grab some screenshots of those comments or of those answers in the comments down below this video, and then we'll add those in a new video as a community recommendation. If you recommend something I haven't played already, by the way, I would also love to play that game. So what is this Erin's card slot? Permanent increase. That's awesome. So now we have room for <laughs> now. We actually don't have to choose. We have room for that one extra card That is so cool. All right So that is how you can operate your character in this game now There are two different characters that we can play as as well We've got Eren's side and we've got Nana's side and then you can replay the tutorial if you want to and then it says that there's more stuff in development as well. Right now, I've got my hands full just trying to upgrade this character. If we pick the other character, by the way, we'll have to start all over with the different upgrades. And then the other game mode is the training game mode, which you can see here. And this is where we can get to play the boss fight once more. So I'm going to try that now. It's going to be difficult, but at least we should be a bit stronger this time. Now, the thing that concerns me, though, is that we don't have all of those upgrades, all of those equipment pieces that we equipped throughout the six or seven previous dungeons prior to the boss battle. In this case, as you guys can see, we don't have the homing missiles, for example, so we have to rely on just normal attacks, which actually means that it should be more difficult to defeat the boss this time around than if we had, you know, played through the game and then tried to defeat the boss. Anyway, let's see what we can do here with our charged up attack. 
We're dealing a decent amount of damage to the boss, I feel like, but still, it does have a lot of HP. And there are different stages to this battle as well. I'm gonna focus here and hopefully we'll be able to get to stage two, which we didn't before, but this time at least we have five HP. So I'd say the chances are pretty good. <laughs> at least we should be able to do it. I've gotten to that second stage multiple times with just one or two HP. So this time with five HP, it should be, it should be achievable. And as you guys can probably start to see now, the enemy is cycling through its attacks. So these are the yellow attacks. And yes, I'm mentioning yellow because they're actually color coded. And then the next one might be the red attack. Yes, there we go. These are the red attacks. And then coming up after that are the blue attacks. And then it cycles back to the yellow attacks. This is the second stage as I was talking about. This is the second stage of this boss battle. This is a bit more tricky now because there's uh, bullets coming <laughs> from all sorts of sites and we have to avoid them, of course, but it's, uh, it's pretty tricky. It's pretty tricky. There we go. We have one HP left now only. And the boss, no, we're so stupid. Oh, guys, why? Why on earth did we do that? Uh, all right, guys, so instead of uh, playing the boss right now, it seems like it's still a bit too difficult with the amount of upgrades or with the lack of upgrades that we've got on our character right now. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to head into Dungeon 1 again and we'll play through Dungeon 1 to 7 and then we'll have a second go at the boss battle, of course, but hopefully with a lot of more upgrades on us. I am really enjoying this game, by the way, but in case it's not your cup of tea, then be sure to look around here on the channel, by the way. I've covered so many different games in many, many different genres already or subscribe for more mobile games goodness in the future and let me know which genre you'd like to see me cover in the comment section and then I'll try to make sure to cover more of those types of games. Now when it comes to the monetization systems here in Reverse Story, it could hardly get any better as I kind of talked a bit about in the beginning of this video as well because there's barely any monetization whatsoever. There's no cash shop, no energy system, no loot boxes. In fact, there could easily have been an energy system but we don't have that. Instead, you can simply buy an in-app purchase to support the developer and that's pretty much it. Brilliant monetization for a brilliant mobile game. Now it does seem though that there used to be advertisements in this game, but they've been removed recently because of an ad network issue. So enjoy that while it lasts. If you want to find the download links for this game, they're in the description box down below if you want to check it out before those advertisements return to the game. So there you have it, Nimble Nation, an awesome indie roguelike shooter made specifically for touch controls. I hope you'll enjoy it if you decide to check it out for yourselves. And now it's time for my mobile gaming news of the day, which is that World of Dragon Nest is now releasing globally very, very soon, at least at some point here in 2020. It's one of the most anticipated MMORPGs of 2020, and I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on it myself. Now, the game has actually been released in a few regions already, but we're all just waiting for the full international release, which should be coming up at some point here in 2020. Online Dragon Nest Mobile, which I covered some time ago, World of Dragon Nest is apparently almost exactly like the Dragon Nest PC game, which is exciting, of course, as it could mean a larger, more full, you know, open world MMORPG experience. And I am really looking forward to that, so I'll be sure to cover that game as soon as it's out. And that was just about it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've had a great time here. Be sure to subscribe for more mobile gaming content and leave a like if you enjoyed today's video. And then until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.